production possibly frontier is a graphical depiction of what a society can produce between two goods or two groups of goods. And in none of the books, except for one, will you find the most important production possibilities frontier that we have today. And that is the dichotomy of the choice between guns and butter, which are metaphoric for national defense, and butter is a metaphoric for saying household goods. Before we continue on with the discussion or the graphical depiction, let's talk about the choices society has to make. We spend, the United States, the last statistical survey that I saw, we spend more than the next 11 countries combined. Combined, not in, but combined. Do we need that much national defense? Well, that's a question for you taxpayers, a question for you taxpayers to decide throughout the rest of your life. But I can show you what this means on the graph. When you draw this curve this way, these are considered to be, on points on the curve, points of maximum output. We're going to assume, because that's how we draw it, that we assume full employment, full employment of all our resources, land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurial ability, which we abbreviate in the way that I've just shown you. We don't use a C here, we use a K. We also assume number three, that the resources I've listed above, resources listed above, are substitutable, but to a limited degree. So we could use more land and less fertilizer or more fertilizer and less land. We could have guidance systems engineers working on missile guidance systems, or they could leave that kind of work and go into carpentry, right? The resources are substitutable, but they're not perfectly. We're going to assume, finally number four, that technology is fixed. So when you draw this curve, you must have these four assumptions in mind, otherwise you couldn't draw that as one point in space. So, putting numbers in, say that's $20 trillion worth of guns, national defense. If that's true, this would be about 10 trillion, and this would be 5 trillion. In terms of butter, let's say just to make it interesting, let's say this is 30 trillion, which has no basis in fact in our country, this is 15 trillion, this would be uh, seven and a half, so we'll say a little bit to the left here, I'll do that as seven, this would be three and a half, so this would be three. Half of this is 15, so this would be 22 and a half, so this would be 22. Okay, just to put some numbers in. Let's pretend that we are at 10 trillion worth of guns of output. If that's true, then we get to have this much household goods, which I will say is 26 trillion worth of household goods. Not too instructive, not yet anyway. But let's say we have a 9-11 incident. Well, then we probably want to spend more money on national defense. Look what happens. I'm going to assume that this is constant in length, even though as I use it, it's not. We're going to have this many more guns, and we do so, we have to have a sacrifice of four trillion worth of household goods. And that makes sense because it takes personnel, it takes metal, it takes time, it takes planes, computers, it takes all those resources that could have gone to produce household goods, now produce gun goods. We want more guns. 
Now we've sacrificed about seven trillion worth of household goods. But look what happens at the end. I have just one chalk length left. So if I want to go all guns, the rest of many part of our potential output, I have to sacrifice all of these household goods. Let's talk about why that's the case. Because resources are not perfectly substitutable, we find that when you first recruit for the production of any of these goods, the, the personnel and the land and the factors of production that you're recruiting are best suited for either guns or they're best suited for household goods. So by comparatively, they're very productive. And so you get a lot back. But then as you try to get more and more people, for example, in, into national defense, the last people you recruit are Quakers and Christian believers and it's conscious objectors. And so how productive are they? Not productive at all. So the alternative minimum which they leave is this larger group of butter. So this is also a picture of what I like to consider to be the law of increasing cost. And that is as a society tries to produce more and more of one kind of good, it can do so, but only at the increasing cost of the other. Now, philosophically, where should you be on this curve? Well, that's what you're going to vote on as a citizen for the rest of your life. You may say, at this point here, the sum of these two ordinal values is at a maximum. But that doesn't mean anything. We're not looking for the maximum number. We're talking about philosophically, how does your country feel about your level of national defense? How does it feel about your level of producing household goods?